Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have covered single phase full wave semi controlled rectifier with symmetrical configuration that is the lecture number 13A. Now in this lecture we will see asymmetrical configuration that is the lecture number 13B. In symmetrical configuration we derived IT average, IT RMS, similarly ID average and ID RMS. Okay. Also we derived the circuit turn of time that is equal to pi minus alpha upon omega. So in symmetrical configuration the conduction angle of diode and the conduction angle of thyristor are equal. So IT average is equal to ID average I was getting that is equal to I0 by 2 and similarly IT RMS is equal to ID RMS I was getting that is equal to I0 by root 2. So you have to keep in mind this. Now in this lecture we will start asymmetrical configuration. See what do you mean by the asymmetrical configuration. In asymmetrical configuration both thyristor this is T1 thyristor and this is T4 thyristor okay. Both thyristor are connected in one leg while this is D3 D diode and this is D2 diode are connected in another leg okay. And supply voltage is given Vt is equal to Vm sin omega t that is also equal to Vab okay. In this way Vba will be minus Vm sin omega t. So this is Vab and this is Vba. Now see the operation. In all the con semi control configuration I already told you that the waveform of output voltage and the waveform of source current are same only there is difference in the conduction angle of thyristor as well as conduction angle of diode. So operation would remain same let us see from alpha at omega t is equal to alpha I am triggering this T1 okay. So from alpha to pi I am triggering this T1 so T1 and D2 will start conducting if we we'll draw the equivalent circuit then you can easily understand this is at plus and this is at minus. So cathode terminal of D2 is connected with minus and this T1 I am triggering so this will be plus this will be plus means this will be plus this will be plus ok. So this D2 will start conducting and this T1 will start conducting at omega t is equal to alpha. So from alpha to pi T1 D2 will start conducting and I will get output voltage that is equal to VAB. Apply KVL like we did in previous lecture you will get V0 is equal to VAB that is equal to Vm sin omega t ok. Now what will happen after pi? See from pi to pi plus alpha supply voltage is negative see this is pi and this is supply voltage is from pi to pi plus alpha supply voltage is negative. Okay. So the moment when you reverse the polarity of supply voltage and since load current is constant I0 is constant and after reversing the supply voltage this B is at plus and this A is at minus. So this D3 will start conducting. See here this D3 will start conducting because anode potential is connected with plus after reversing the supply voltage. So in this case D2 and D3 starts freewheeling and output voltage I will get that is equal to 0. Once this is sorted means load is sorted. So output voltage I won't get output voltage will be 0. Now this D3 is starts conducting from pi to pi plus alpha means this terminal is at potential plus and this is at minus. So T1 will stop conducting ok. So I can say that the conduction angle of T1 this is I T1. T1 is conducting from alpha to pi only. Is it fine? after pi D2 and D3 free wheels ok. So conduction angle of thyristor will come out to be pi minus alpha and also from alpha to pi output voltage will follow the supply voltage like this and from pi to pi plus alpha D2 D3 is free wheeling that means output voltage will be 0 in this way cycle repeats ok. Now at omega t is equal to pi plus alpha I am triggering thyristor T4. So the moment when you trigger this thyristor T4 then this T4 and D3 will start conducting from pi plus alpha to 2 pi. So T4 D3 will start conducting from pi plus alpha to 2 pi and from alpha to pi T1 D2 will conduct and from pi to pi plus alpha D2 D3 will conduct. Now I can easily find the thyristor current waveform and diode current waveform. So the thyristor current I, uh, waveform I will get from alpha to pi. Now see the diode current wave. First I will see the for what angle diode D3 is conducting. See diode D3 is this one. So di diode D3 will start conducting from pi. So from pi to 2 pi plus alpha. 2 pi plus alpha diode D3 is conducting. Is it fine? See here from pi to pi plus alpha D2 D3 starts free will means D3 is conducting. 
आफ्टर पाई प्लस अल्फा टी फोर डी थ्री विल कंडक्ट मीन्स डी थ्री इज ऑलरेडी कंडक्टिंग फ्रॉम पाई प्लस अल्फा टू टू पाई सो आई कैन से दैट आफ्टर टू पाई प्लस अल्फा आफ्टर टू पाई प्लस अल्फा अगेन डी टू डी थ्री विल फ्री व्हील्स सो आफ्टर टू पाई प्लस अल्फा दिस इज टू पाई प्लस अल्फा अगेन डी टू डी थ्री विल फ्री व्हील्स सो इफ आई हैव टू फाइंड द कंडक्शन एंगल ऑफ डायोड डी थ्री then how will i find c the conduction angle of diode d3 d3 is conducting from pi so this is pi d3 is conducting from pi and it will continue to conduct till 2 pi plus alpha this is something like this 2 pi plus alpha from pi to 2 pi plus alpha so conduction angle of diode d3 that i will get is equal to 2 pi plus alpha minus pi that is equal to pi plus alpha similarly we can find the conduction angle of diode d2 that will be same as diode d3 okay so i can say that conduction angle of diode will co is coming out to be pi plus alpha and conduction angle of thyristor is coming out to be pi minus alpha okay the average output voltage will remain same in all the semiconductor as well as the waveform of source current will remain same in all the semiconductor you can do the operation same operation that ha that has been already discussed in lecture number 13 a so you can do the operation and you can easily find the source current waveform like that okay now find the average value of thyristor current rms value of thyristor current and average value of diode current and rms value of diode current so it average will come out to be i not into how for how many period it is conducting pi minus alpha upon total time period okay it rms will come out to be i not under root pi minus alpha upon 2 pi similarly id average diode is conducting for pi plus alpha duration and time period is 2 pi and id rms is equal to i not under root conduction angle that is pi plus alpha upon 2 pi how i am getting this i have already discussed in lecture number 8 that is the classification of rectifier and in the last 10 minutes i explain how to find the rms value and average value of any rectangular pulse so go through that lecture you will understand how i am getting it average it rms id average and id rms okay that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will start single phase full wave semi control converter that is the last full converter with free wheeling diode that is the lecture number 13c okay This is lecture number thirteen B, and the previous lecture is thirteen A. If you guys understood the concept, then please like this video. For doubt solving, you can join our Facebook group.